Hello, curious learners. Today, our lesson is on subtracting polynomials. And this first part might seem very familiar if you just finished watching the lesson on adding polynomials. So let's start with like terms. Like terms are terms where the variable is exactly the same, 7x minus 5x. This means 7x's minus 5x's. Notice I put those parentheses in there just to help us remember that we have 7 and we're taking away 5. Just to make it look a little bit more, I don't know, make a little bit more sense, keep things together. But if you had 7 and you took away 5, you would be left with 2x's. That's what it looks like when you subtract like monomials. With unlike monomials, just like we did in our last one, 2a minus 5b, it means a plus a minus b plus b plus b plus b plus b, 5b's. You can't join them together, they're, they're, com they're different. So it will stay as a binomial just like we did in the previous lesson. Um, 2a minus 5b is going to remain as a binomial, you can't join them together. Let's talk about um, comparing apples to apples. If I had a minus 8g minus 6s, this is like one apple, eight grapes, and six strawberries. The most common mistake in this, just like with adding, is that you join all the numbers together and then join all the letters together. That is a mistake. This does not equal negative 13ags. Just like one apple, eight grapes, and six strawberries, would not join together to give you negative 13 apple grape strawberry. You can't join them together to give you something that doesn't exist. You have to leave them separate, okay? So it doesn't really make sense for us to join our letters together and join the numbers together. So same thing with polynomial subtracting. If you're going to subtract fruit, it needs to be the same. 13 apples minus 9 apples leaves you 4 apples. Just like with variables, 13 a's minus 9 a's will give you 4 a's. The a's stick together, just like apples. All right. So our variable, no matter what the variable is, it has to be like variables for us to be able to subtract them. Same with adding. All right, so here's the rule written out for you. You might want to pause and just write this down. If the terms are like terms, you can subtract the coefficients or the numbers and keep the variables the same. Here's an example. You had 17 x squareds. You subtracted 7 of those x squareds and you're left with 10 x squareds. Notice the variable stays the exact same where the number, the coefficient, which is the number in front of the variable, you subtract it. 17 minus 7 is equal to 10. The, the variable remains exactly the same. So here's a practice question for you. Go ahead and try that one out. What is 15m minus 6m? Did you get 9m? 15 minus 6 is equal to 9, and the m stays the same. The variable stays exactly the same. Now there are two things to remember when you're talking about subtraction that are going to maybe get a little bit complicated. So um, I want to make two points. Number one, <clears throat> if you want to change the order of terms, you need to move it with the sign. Subtraction is not um, what we call commutative. You can't move subtraction. 2 minus 1 is not the same as 1 minus 2. So you have to, if you're going to move things around, you've actually got to make sure to move the sign with the number. You can't just move the numbers all around and ignore the signs. So here's an example. If I had 14 A's minus 23 B's minus 7 A's, I want to get 7 A over here to these 14 A's. I want to move that around. To do that, I have to move this sign, the negative sign, with the 7a. That entire part will move. Notice that that's moved over there. This negative sign stays with the 23b, 
but this whole term with the sign moved over to there. So now I can join them together. 17a minus 7a will leave me with 7a, and the 23b's are a totally different thing. They have to stay separated by that subtraction symbol. All right, so that's just one thing to keep in mind. The second thing to keep in mind about subtraction is the most common mistake that is made when we're subtracting, and that's to forget about the distributive property. And I want to show you an example because this will make more sense if I show you an example. 10a minus 19b minus 5a plus 13b. This is the first polynomial, or the first, it's specifically a binomial, it has two parts. This, everything inside of this set of parentheses, minus everything inside of this set of parentheses. When we take this minus sign and we distribute it into each term inside the parentheses, we call this the distributive property. You don't need to memorize that term, it's just what we're doing. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and actually do the subtraction. So you notice that um, this becomes your first term, 10a minus 19b, that's your first binomial. Then you are subtracting 5a, but it also changes it from being plus 13b to we have to distribute that negative, so we are subtracting 13b as well. Another way to think about it is that you're multiplying, if you want to, you can say you're multiplying that negative times each term, or you can just say think of it like changing the sign for each term inside there. It's like the opposite of 5a plus 13b. Um, either way is sort of consistent and, and fine to look at. Let's go ahead and join together our like terms. We're going to rearrange things. We had 10a, negative 5a, negative 19b, and negative 13b. So we've just moved them around. Remember when you move them around, you stay with the negative signs. The negative signs move with them. And we're going to join together like terms. 10a minus 5a gives us 5a. Negative 19b minus 13b is going to leave us with negative 32b. So, the distributive property, example number two. I want to show you another example of how this works. Um, sometimes you have a negative sign, and that's going to work a little bit differently, but following the same exact pattern. Remember, that negative means you are subtracting 2x, you are also subtracting negative 3y. So the way that this changes is negative 2x, or subtracting 2x becomes negative 2x, but subtracting negative 3y becomes a positive 3y. Again, you can think of it as the negative times negative, which gives you a positive, or you can think of it as subtracting the negative, taking away a negative is the same thing as a positive. Or you can think of it as the opposite of negative, or the opposite of positive 2x and the opposite of negative 3y. Um, both, any of those ways work, um, whatever way helps you to remember it. I just try and remember to distribute that negative sign to each term inside the parentheses. Then we rearrange, making sure that our negative signs follow. So negative 2x remains as negative 2x when it's joined together with the 6x on the front. And our final answer is going to look like this. All right, so a couple things to remember. Um, the distributive property is a little bit complicated, probably the area where most mistakes are made um, when it comes to subtracting. All right, so let's go ahead and um, do some subtracting questions, a couple of examples. 9a plus 5b minus 6a minus 2b. First, we get rid of the parentheses, and we remember to use the distributive property. So it's going to, the first um, set of parentheses is going to remain the same, 9a plus 5b. Our second set's going to become negative 6a and positive 2b. Again, using that distributive property to change the sign, everything inside of the second set of parentheses. Now we're going to move the like terms together, keeping the negative signs with the terms join together like terms for our final answer. 
That's how we're going to solve all of the subtraction questions with polynomials. We're going to follow those exact same steps. Let's look at another example here. x plus 4y minus negative x plus 10y. First off, we get rid of those parentheses using the distributive property. That means we get rid of minus negative 2x becomes positive 2x. Minus 10y becomes negative 10y. Move together the like terms, the x's together at the beginning, the y's together at the end. I like to keep them alphabetical. x plus 2x gives me 3x. 4y minus 10y will leave me with negative 6y. I just wanted to give one example to show how this works with longer questions. So instead of working with binomials in this question, we're actually going to be subtracting some trinomials and then you'll have an opportunity to practice subtracting a trinomial like this. The key here is to follow the same exact steps we've been using all along. We're going to get rid of the parentheses and use the distributive property. The challenge with this one is remembering that this negative gets distributed to all three terms. All three terms there. So it will look like this. Negative 2x, negative 6y, and positive 4z. The first three terms didn't change at all, but the second trinomial, every single term changes. Now I'm going to do a lot of moving together. I'm going to move the like terms together using the commutative property. I'm going to commute those numbers, move them all around, put my x's together, my y's together, my z's together, making sure that I keep the signs with the numbers when I move them. 5 minus 2 is 3. Negative 3 minus negative 6 gives me negative 9y. And then 7z plus 4z will give me 11z. So that will be my final answer there, 3x minus 9y plus 11z. I'll give you a question on that that you can go ahead and try out on your own. So just a quick reminder of things to keep in mind with subtraction. There's a couple more things you've got to remember. One, the distributive property. Most mistakes happen when we don't subtract everything in the second polynomial. That's the number one place where people make mistakes. You have to distribute that negative sign to every single term inside of the second set of parentheses. Also remember to only join like terms. Um, you can practice this by um, remembering the fruit, comparing apples to apples. Just remember to only join exactly like terms. I hope this lesson was helpful for you. Have a wonderful day.